Um, can right. you summarize the cutscene that we just missed? Maybe. Uh, helicopter was coming to pick us up, but then it got blown out of the sky. Oh shit! And we fell out of it. Maybe. And uh, now we gotta deal with it. You gotta be more careful. You'll put an eye out. <laughs> Uh, if it's like level spoilery, I guess just see if we can figure it out. If we miss it, let us know. Or if it's pointing us in a direction, I guess let us know. Stone, it's Quinn. We picked up a mayday from Miller. We're both Give serious. You Stop can get her bar. custom models, right? You don't have to play as Sam now. for the multiplayer. How many Eat me, Rodriguez. What's your 20? We're in front of the museum. You know, where we're supposed to be? Where the hell are you? Stay put. I'm on my way. Roger that. Okay, well, if I already missed it, you're welcome to share it, uh, Phoenix. <laughs> what hole did this bloody eyeball go into? A visceral puzzle game. What are you looking at? Now, when it says health plus one, is that just healing me? Um, can it increase you above a maximum or anything like that? So oh, you can you can go above the maximum, and then there's also armor that can take you above it too. So normally you I think you start at 50, but grabbing these various power ups will take you to up to maybe 100 or more. Are those instants uh, to us like the sledgehammer was, or if I pick up a health pack, you don't get it? Uh, I presume they are instants to us because I grabbed several off like a crate back there. Okay, cool better way to do, especially if you can have up to like 16 people, right? Better, Kevin. Uh, this is the sort of game that has a lot of secrets all over the place. Mm -hmm. Power-ups and cool weapons and whatnot you can find if you duck around a corner, so um, I'm not going to recommend we like try to find all of those. Go around every single corner, but if you see a suspicious looking corner, I recommend you peek around it. That's really fun though, That's, that draws me to a lot of games like this, searching for secrets. Yeah, so Phoenix Rising is saying if you throw that eyeball at the right place, it throws a shotgun at you and you can start the game with it. Stone, come in, where are you? Rodriguez, I told you, I'll be there in a minute. It's Jones, Rodriguez took- Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, shit. That is an invisible wall. That's not the way we're supposed to go. <laughs> it's just a regular wall. This feels like progress in here. Okay, so when you pick up, they are in instants. When you pick it up, I hear a little yep. sound effect. Gotcha. That's cool. So if you need to heal, just remember to splash on your hammer. Vorticons. Yeah, secret focus level design that kind of inspires you to check every nook and cranny and see something that looks suspicious. It's a lot of fun, I think. Whoa. I would not go in that building. Okay, seems like a bad idea. Okay, more health. I'm wondering how they did that too. Like, you think that that would put on a lot of strain? I think they simulated the particle effects. It was far enough away that they didn't have to actually cause the building to crumble and make little yeah, yeah. polygons for each part. having the context sensitive music to let you know when you're in danger. I think that's important for mm -hmm. this kind of game. It makes it a fun spectacle action game instead of like a, a horror game. Right. Twitch shooter. I think there's even um, if you weren't paying attention to the sound you even like shift your pose when you're in combat. 
Yeah, when you're you're uh now does that happen for guns as well? I figured that was just a melee thing. Probably, maybe. I don't think we can go over here. Hmm. Hmm. Uh I think we were maybe back over here somewhere. Yeah, it's in the direction of the uh, building that just got destroyed. Maybe. This is how we originally got in here. Maybe they're trying to compel us to run away from the giant explodey ship of death. Mm, maybe. There's not a whole lot of running away. Uh, uh, I think. Well, I don't know where you are, but I think I found the trail just by looking at. Okay, coming. Um. Yeah. <laughs> these power-ups, or you Placement hear power the sound of combat. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. You don't know. Oh, I have well, that's cool. Before. That's you know, power-ups in that way are sort of like uh, bananas in Donkey Kong Country. That yeah, they give you extra lives, but bananas are really there to draw your attention. What's the yelling sound? Holy shit! <laughs> what the hell was <laughs> that? that? <laughs> Those are the kamikazes. <laughs> Glad there's an audio cue. All right, so I hear him. Maybe we want to save our bullets for that then, huh? Uh, so, with this gun, you have unlimited ammo, but you have to reload every 10 okay. shots. Okay, so it's like uh, Overwatch. Not that Overwatch did that for the first time. But I think that's probably the way to do it. Like, having actual limited ammo only really works in certain genres. I do that in horror. It's an so interesting decision. Other weapons, other weapons you do have limited ammo. Mm. Um, but it... it it worked. I don't think you ever find yourself, like, cursing the fact the... that you have no ammo. Right. It's more guess... like it incentivizes you to find the right gun for the job. Ah, so here's a spot. Kevin. Might be worth trying to get up to get it. Oh. Or something up there. I see. That's cool. Uh, looks like there's like a shift to climb, maybe. Maybe not. Uh, no shift to climb, but sometimes there are ways to like kind of jump up on things. Source Engine did something like that, where you'd press shift at the top of the ledge and it would let you just barely climb up. Hmm. Uh, um, there might be some other way up there. Oh, so up here actually, there's a. Oh, you shoot those down to get them. Oh, but that uh, might be no, telling you that, we can get I up think here. That's that there's some other I way. See. That's cool. Maybe there's a way in that building. God. Yeah, that sound cue is pretty awesome, Robert Gable. Alright, well, it's not worth spending ages Oh, I think I figured it out. So, yeah, secret yard oh. found. I went backwards into the previous area as I was trying to get on top of that building where the marker was. And there's yeah. a bunch of shit back here. That's what you were talking Whoa! What the hell is that thing? Holy shit. I just got destroyed. Oh. <laughs> where was that? Oh, God. Where are you relative to where we just were? Take me back to we where we were, and I can figure out where to go. Hey, next. We we were over here. We over were here? here, okay. So it's so over this way. <laughs> uh, we're gonna jump on this little barrel here, and jump on this guy, and then run and jump. Great oh, for yeah. a non-punishing -pun death penalty. That's nice. That's something you can set though, right? You can specify that you want to have. Uh, I think so. Lives. Yeah. yeah, so this is cool. I like that you're drawn to that by the single little health power up, up there that's only there to let you know, mm -hmm. hey, maybe you can get here. That's super cool. What does electricity plus 50 mean? Uh, you got some electricity ammo. So at some point you may... Find a gun that shoots electric? Right. 
gotcha. I think that that's pretty much one way, so I'll go ahead and progress further again, I think. Oh shit, I missed it. I mean, shoot. <laughs> it. No, you're good. Oh, we're in Washington, D.C.? Are we? There's a obelisk out there. Oh, I guess we're in Cairo. That makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. Can you shoot their bomb, or uh, they just blow up when you shoot them? Put a sock in it. It's been to shoot, yeah. <laughs> also, I recommend running backwards when you see them, when you hear them. <laughs> yeah. That seems correct. That's so many dudes. <laughs> Headshots are actually the way to go. Headshots? Yeah, yeah. Or oh, because their head is also exploding. They don't have heads anymore. Right. I wonder how they do that, man. Like, any other game that had that much going on on the screen, especially with all the giblets when they blow up, you get a really serious mm -hmm. frame rate slow down. But this is an older game, and it's performing just fine. Um, did you ever play Kingdom Hearts 2? Uh, no, no. There's what a segment in that game where you're fighting like 10,000 enemies, and it's a PS2 game, so they clearly did some trickeries, shenanigans. They weren't actually rendering all that at the same time as individual units. Any survivors? Negative. And it's too hot out here to hang around. I'm heading inside to find Professor Stein. Copy that. Watch your six. That place is probably full of aliens. It's about to be full of dead aliens. Wow, yeah, you don't really spend a lot of time with just a couple enemies, do you? <laughs> no. No, and the disappointing thing about the early game, like the first two hours approximately, is that the order, like the number of aliens you see right now is orders of magnitude smaller. Oh, really? Than what you get later. That's crazy. Now if you want to keep it on your sub-block, man, how long is the game? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Crap. <laughs> yeah, pays to have good headphones just so you know which direction they're coming from. Yeah, exactly. Because they can and will spawn behind you. Uh huh. Or, you know, get teleported in behind you. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh Ravon and they um uh. most of the enemies you were fighting weren't actually model. It was just this big blob of characters that looked like enemies, and then occasionally one would spawn next to you that was an actual rendered enemy you had to deal with. 10 hours on how long to beat? Okay, that's easy. I'll leave it to you, but that I mean, that would be certainly fun, I think, to this co-op yeah, yeah. now, then. Whoa. Sledgehammer usually pretty good against them. Better than, I think, trying to unload a whole clip of ammo under them. Oh, uh, sure. Oh, sometimes I'll even swap, swap this to uh, gloves, the melee attack. Almost every enemy in the game, any, any non-boss enemy, you can just walk up and there's a sort of insta-kill melee move. I see, that's cool. Uh, apprentice Egyptologist, just because that's an appropriate achievement for this game and its style so far. Yeah, I was trying to describe this game earlier. A lot of people in chat had played it, um, were describing it better than I was, but it, it feels to me like a more serious and mature... Like, serious in the sense that they've made the effort to make really good level design version of Duke Nukem. Uh, Duke Nukem is also a really silly first-person shooter, but it doesn't yes. feel like it's good as well. <laughs> This is the bonus enemy I fought earlier. 
backpedaling and shooting is the name of the game. Show one's for Jones bones. There you go. You figured it out. Cool. And that's when you have uh, no weapon equipped, right? Right. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Arc de Triomphe enabled. I don't, I don't know what that means know at what all. That means. <laughs> yeah, the lack of AI scripts helps. That's what I'm wondering is if maybe the big group of dudes with the bombs, the kamikaze guys, like. If there's like four of them working on the same script or something, and they technically count as a unit because they tend to blow up together at the same time. Time to do a little research. There's that stock door opening sound effect. You hear everything. Mm hmm mm hmm God, Ben turned on Windows Media Center. What the hell is that bizarre sound? Thanks, Ben. Type. <laughs> oh, did I not uh, wish for that quietly enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're good. Sam, I raised Stein. He's up on the second floor. Sounds like oh, he found the hieroglyphs. Health is 100 is max, okay. But there's a, there's a spawn value. You start with like 50 and then it can go up to 100. Right, in fact, you can even go above 100 from a certain special, a few special items. Okay, interesting. Does armor cap now, out eventually? Yes, they both have some sort of soft max and then a, a hard max. I see. Oh, I see. So the little red vials take you above a max, the soft max. And the yeah. health packs don't. Gotcha. Right. That's cool. And I think there are like bigger little red vials too. I see. So this is. Okay, here comes the chopper for you, oh, Of course, everything is going to be. I do. <laughs> it's a cool way to draw our eye up to it here. Cool. Tentacle choppers. And they, I think they're probably comfortable giving you the crazy insta-kill melee thing because there's so many enemies that that's not really viable most of the time. Or even if it is, you know, that's only handling one of them. Right, exactly. Side hallways, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. That'll do. That'll do. Cool. Oh, it's on the ceiling. Oops. More on the ceiling here. Big uh, armor down there. Oh god. <laughs> oh, shut up. Hmm. 
Bullshit, no. Probably really glad there's no friendly fire. <laughs> Would not be good for this game. No. It's just too much to shoot at. Yeah. There's some pretty crazy weapons in this eventually, sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever played a spectacle shooter before. I've definitely done spectacle brawlers, like, you know, God of War or Canada. But it feels like you're, you're living for the next crazy encounter. Oh, yeah. It's not like this is Magicka. We still gotta do Magicka. It's on the list. Yes. Yeah. Everyone in a room at the same time and play it. Oh god, oh god, oh god, something's. Ah, uh, fucker. Here's something to shoot around. Trying to follow my headphones where you are. I lost you. Oh, there you are. I guess listening for the sound of gunshots is one way to <laughs> find the other person, especially since you can shoot all person. you like. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I do wish there were a little mini map or just a directional arrow Beacon showing direction to the partner. Great. Phoenix, it sounds like there's a lot of other like little Easter eggs in this. Oh, that's satisfying. You got Satisfying power up placement. Bananas. Uh, I, I forget which button I assigned to uh, like turn off flashlight, but you'll probably want to figure that out for the stealth part up ahead. Okay, let me see if I can look that up real quick. Maybe it'll tell me. Keyboard and mouse. Bigger keys. I'm streaming with you, dude. There's no stealth part in this game. Oh, okay. <laughs> I totally believed you. I think stealth is... That would be surprising. Sam doesn't do stealth. I never finished Magicka, no. It was one of those games where I would finally get the four people in the room to play it. We'd play it to, like, the third level, and then we'd never get together again to do it. And then I'd find another group of people to play it, and we'd get to the third level, and so on. I've had that yep. happen for so many co-op games. Yep. At least with stream, you feel like there's a schedule, Professor, people counting on you. <laughs> Quinn, it's me. Stein didn't make it. Shit. Did you find his phone? That's a bummer. <laughs> you mean the phone you just called? Uh, right. You should have pictures of hieroglyphs that haven't been deciphered on there. You've got to upload those to us right now. Then you can head I think all the fun of Magicka is playing in co-op, so I wouldn't want to play it solo. Yeah. Doing the spell interactions and stuff is a lot of fun. Just mashing E? <laughs> Pretty much. Still a lot of things. <laughs> Looks like if you melee with a bunch of enemies around you, like those little guys, you'll stomp them all at once. Yeah, I think so. That's convenient. Cool. Yeah, killing each other is a big part of the fun. If you guys get a chance, a really fun local co-op game you should play. It was in today's Penny Arcade comic. Uh, we played it when Cat and Donna Ramirez called Overcooked. Dieter, it's <laughs> it's really good. Will make you hate your friends though. God. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> There's all my armor. Hmm. It's been a long enough time since we played it, and I don't remember shit from Magicka. Something's hitting me, I don't know what it is. Up oh. above. Good looking out. I squished it. Thank you. Oh, this is... Birds. I think we've got a little green thing that shows you the way to the exit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good conveyance. Ah! There's a regular dude shooting at us. Quick. Oh. Kind of sort of regular dude. <laughs> hey, shotgun. Ask, did you pick up a shotgun? And then, oh, no, that's not you. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many of them here. Teachable moment with the shotgun, apparently. It's fun. Bunch of armor back there. So. That's fun. It's one of those, like, the designer could have just put one health power up there, but they put five small ones because it feels really satisfying to pick them up. Yeah. By the exit over here, if you hear gunshots. Hear there you are. I guess not having the arrow doesn't let you know if they're like right behind you either. Right. Oh, hello. <laughs> the melee kick attack is funny against these dudes. <laughs> That's not an instant kill though, it just knocks him back. So. Oh god, the fucker right behind you, right behind you! <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't until too late that I realized that they didn't kill you. That's oh, it wasn't actually killing them. Yeah, I just knocked him away, so I think I knocked him behind me. Even that's just a lot of guys for a shooter. Come on. There you go. With the pistol, you can aim a bit if you uh, right hold down the right trigger. Oh yeah. Or sorry, right click. Well, that's useful. Is that any better than just like lining up the reticle? Uh, it can be. Uh, maybe, it might. I don't know. Gotcha. Makes me feel better about it. Sure. <laughs> right. You're saying that this is a small number of enemies for this game. This feels ridiculous yes. to me that there's this many dudes. Yes. These are all very. These are also very, um, like sort of, well, Manila. relatively claustrophobic stages too. Sure. Oh, sure, sure. Well, even that's saying a lot. Of them used to shooters tend to be indoors for that reason. Right. Tend to be kind of corridor. Mm -hmm.
Seems like they had a pretty good balance on provision of uh, power ups. Okay, I can do different number of keys or hot keys to switch weapons. Makes sense. Cool. Uh oh. Man, you're ugly. Oh, it's a boss fight. Awesome. So I guess it's a boss arena. <laughs> So one of us can tank him. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool looking boss too. Yeah, this is the um, high fi equivalent of Man Scorpion, I guess. <laughs> right. Attack while his tail's up. No, no, no! Don't attack while his tail's up! Don't attack while his tail's up! <laughs> and made that mistake twice in a row, man. Cast lightning on its shell. It's got a sting. <laughs> He's a scorpion. Yeah. Bad pun or good joke? If it was a mistake, maybe that was just a really like a disgruntled translator employee. Across two games, and uh, Ted will Across see two in games. six. Yeah. <laughs> They stopped that tradition after that point, didn't they? It's they had a few Final Fantasy games. Yeah, without the extremely punishing first boss. Punishing first boss that has a mechanic that makes it more tolerable. The first boss in eight, you had a fucking timer, right? It was Ifrit. They were like grading you on your seed rating or whatever. on stone. Sam, too hot to pick you up here. See you at the extraction point. Roger that, Garrett. Uh, hanging a left here. Did you do this straight? Oh, I see. It's magic hallway. <laughs> Spikey, oh fuck, seems like the appropriate reaction to being shot in the face. Sound design in this game is really good. Clearly thought about it. So, not that I need a motivation to play this game, but who are these human dudes? Are they like kind of human, not all the way human? They do make a growling sound. They, um, I think, are other soldiers of men mental soldiers that okay. we brought from somewhere. That was you. Okay. Kind of human. <laughs> Inspecting. Hmm. Right. If you want to know more, there are many codex entries that you could examine. There's. <laughs> Fuck you. No, I'm actually serious about <laughs> that. There actually are. There actually are codex yeah, yeah, yeah. entries. I... That's cool. Oh, is that that happens when you press in the right uh, middle mouse button? Brings up yeah, a little yeah. codex. That's fun. That totally sounds like something that would be bullshit, though. I'm pretty sure you did the little training mission with uh, Ifrit before you go fight the giant robot spider, don't you? Yeah, that's like the second mission. Come on, they don't send the new seed members out to go fight giant robot spider monsters on no, their first please. mission. You gotta go fight the God of Fire first, please. That's newbie material right there. It's been a while since I played 8, so I could be wrong about that. It's one of the games that I've already played that I'm looking most forward to playing again on Twitch to see what everyone else's opinion on it because I don't like it. Have you not played that one yet on, on stream? Not eight, no. I did, uh, let's see. Six, five, six, seven, nine, and ten. So I haven't done one, two, three, four, eight, twelve. 
13. 13 I haven't played at all. Played it for like an hour or two and I just couldn't take it. <laughs> I heard it gets pretty good though. I it's fantastic 30 or 40 hours into it. Exactly. I've had people say that to me with a completely straight face. Oh, that's cool. If you press the reload button with the sledgehammer, do a cool spinny attack. Rotate. Oh, yeah. How did that go for you, Kodiak? Oh, wow. So, boss enemy becomes a regular enemy. <laughs> yep. They didn't hesitate on that one. That's cool. Is he like not quite as strong as before? He might be the same strength. <laughs> Alright, I can't one shot him, so. Yeah, I'm looking forward to International Zodiac System for 12. 12 was a really good game. I had fun with it. This guy's script got busted. I only ever played 12 once. It was one of those games that I waited in line to get it at midnight, and I took it home, and I took days off of work, and just played it until I beat it, and as a result, I remember nothing about it. So <laughs> a few key sequences, because it was over so fast for me. It's, it's really easy to break 8, exactly. Yeah, 8's system was a cool one in that they were trying something new, but it, they, it would have been nice if they'd iterated on it. As much as I don't want to see a Final Fantasy 8 2, like, seeing them try the draw system a second time with the lessons learned from the first one, I think they could maybe pull something off that would be better. But it was too I corrective a strategy eight. to just sit and train spells forever. What's the best thing about 8, sorry? Uh, was... Um... Scaling, scaling battles. It totally yeah. eliminates the need to grind. And in fact, the fact that you can, like, four hours into it, turn off random battles entirely and never fight one again for the rest of the game, fine. it's fantastic. Yeah. I 100% agree. Did you ever play Bravely Default? No, no, I don't have the, the DS or something, right? Yeah, 3DS. Um, the, it's a game that in the menu is an option to turn random battles off at the beginning of the game, and it has all of these really cool conveniences that you know, you'd wish more uh, turn-based JRPGs would have. That's awesome. You can always fast-forward combat. Um, you have this brave system uh, where in each battle you can borrow from your future turns up to four times. It's called braving, so you can like attack four times in a row with your character, but if you don't win the battle in those four turns, now you have to wait four turns before you can act again. And that is amazing for random battles, because you almost always win a random battle on your first turn anyway, right? So you can just wreck every random bullshit fight that you get into. And can you... much to ask that you be able to uh, like... Uh, set up macros or something like that so that it even just does that at the beginning of absolutely. the Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you get three macros uh -huh. you can set that are like, here is the broken OP attack routine that I've set up for my four party members where I want, you know, character one to do this on the first turn, this on the second turn, and so on. So you can just press go and get into the battles. It's super, super fast. You don't really need to grind in the game, but... Yeah, it can be easy to get this, yeah. I haven't played any of the Star Ocean games. It's one of those JRPG series that's just eluded me. It's never really crossed my desk. I always confuse them with Lunar. Yeah, I think there was one Christmas where I got Lunar, Silver Star Story, and Star Ocean, the second story, <laughs> as, as presents. And it was really for a while. <laughs> It turned out they were both cool games in different ways, but... Yeah. More games should do the the Earthbound thing, absolutely, Kodiak, where if you're strong enough, you just win the fight. Um, but in the case of Bravely Default, in that case, you you know, you don't really care about those enemies that you're so strong that you would just win the fight against, so you would just turn off encounters anyway. And that, that even removes that step on top of it.
Yeah, I can only see 15's been in development forever. Tetsuya Nomura cannot finish a game. It's, I think that, what, the last Kingdom Hearts game was Kingdom Hearts 2, and that was for the PS2, so for the entire PS3 release cycle, he has not released that sequel. Ouch. Yeah, I kind of see what you mean, that even though I don't have unlimited shotgun ammo, I basically have unlimited shotgun ammo. Right. It's really only in like these big fights that you, you know, you run out of the shotgun, and so now you are, you know, okay, fine. In situations where you would be using the shotgun, instead you're now going to be using the rocket launcher or the. <laughs> right. It's it's a puzzle game in that you're detecting what the most efficient weapon is to use for a given enemy. Pistol is fine for the kamikaze guys, for example. It's kind of a waste of shotgun. Them. Although, there's a whole lot of them. Uh, yeah. Shotgun can be pretty useful there. Because if you blow up one of them, it'll probably blow up the rest. 15 is built on the corpse of some of the 13 sequels. Um, he, he originally couldn't finish releasing everything he promised to release for Final Fantasy 13, so he took what was left of it and morphed it into FF15. Miss Sakaguchi. Fabulous exploding star crystals, yeah. Uh, I remember... I was like, no, Square, no, why are you calling it Fabula Nova Crystallis Chronicle of Final Fantasy Thirteen? Just, just, no, don't do that. Yeah, um, I was playing record, Final Fantasy Record Keeper for a very long time, and then for a little while, oh god, uh, for a little while got into, hey, would you mind just going around this corner for me real quick, Marcia? Sure. Holy shit! <laughs> I didn't see it at all. Oh, yeah, there must be some upgrades in there. Uh, anyway, so then, um, <laughs> then Final Fantasy Brave Exvius came out. Oh my I have no idea guys. what brave exvius means. Those are not words that came up. Brave or exvius came up anywhere <laughs> in the, you know, 40 hours that I played it. You know, I played through all the campaign. I certainly played through all the random grindy stuff. Record Keeper is a very reasonable name, I think. It's like we're drawing yeah. all the Final Fantasies. There are these records. Like, they're you start up the game them, and you're this librarian. Yeah, okay, that's cool. The Brave Exodius. Come on, guys. Exvius, whatever. We're just saying that the naming is really dumb, and it's not all Nomura. Like, there are other people to do that. Oh, I don't see. It can be fun in the case of, like, uh, Hideo Kojima. Sometimes his goofy titles are kind of uh, endearing. But it just seems really pretentious and stupid when it comes from Square, especially from Nomura. Oh my god. 358 divided by two days, that's the subtitle for a Kingdom Hearts <laughs> game for the DS. Natural log of 358 divided by <laughs> two. Final Fantasy Oilers number. Chronicle of Healthy Plank Constants. Yeah, calling him a tryhard is pretty fair. Well, I'll go back and play Sakaguchi stuff. Like Lost Odyssey and uh, Blue Dragon both have their issues. And... Oh shit, these guys are way too fast. Yeah, there you go. Terra Battle is actually super fun if you haven't played it yet. It's a um, mobile game. It has a lot of really, really cool like puzzle RPG design space. Looking forward, they're supposed to be doing a console version of it that's uh, less mobile-y, if that makes sense. It's 358 over two days is how you're supposed to pronounce it. It's 
kind of unusual though that because he was the art director for Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 10, so it's weird that of all the people to get the the mantle of lead creative designer behind Final Fantasy that would go to the art director. And which one is worse? God, there's so many guys. <laughs> I see the benefit of the shotgun now. Yeah. So I don't think they've scaled up the number of enemies for two-player. I think this might be the same number. Oh, wow. Because um, I remember when I was playing the stage, I would basically have to run, like, run, shoot while running backwards, basically to the beginning of, of like, this area. I guess that explains why it's such a huge hallway, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they give you all the space. Yeah, I still need to play the... Well, I need to play Final Fantasy 13 in general, but I've heard the sequels are pretty decent gameplay-wise. I don't know if it's like the Final Fantasy X-2 thing, where it's the best gameplay ever, but the story is so abysmally bad. Oh, is V6 supposed to be the letter V six times? All right, I'm gonna call it V6. There's another kick-ass game. <laughs> Kami added the bomber quote. Oh my god. This is just obscene. I'm still just curious how they pulled this off. I've played the MMOs before where you have like half as many enemies and your frame rate slows to a crawl. It seems to be really well optimized for this or something. Although with an MMO, the server's also trying to, or I guess yeah, I don't know if it's pass all this information around. Yeah. I still don't believe that I beat that boss. Did you play Bloodborne at all, uh, Dieter? No, I haven't. I haven't. If you get a chance, you should watch my recent highlight from it, from the, the supposed hardest boss in the Soul series. Um, I won the fight, and I don't know how I won the fight. That's a it wasn't me can, holding the controller. God. I think you can see that in the short highlight. Cool. And then uh, Flarewing, so Apex's brother, posted a video of him beating it at the lowest level in the game in like three minutes. Serious? He really likes those Souls games, man. I'm a big fan of Clearwing. Look forward to shooting the shit with him about it at PAX. Did you end up watching Hey PAX beat uh, the first one? Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That's really cool. Yeah, I was in some kind of zone. I don't know. I'm at the LZ. It's too hot. I can't land. Clear it out. I'll come and get you. Roger that. The dev just calls it V. Oh, shit. You could go to Pack South sometime, right? I guess you'd have to get badges, but as far as I know, they're not they're not selling out quite as quickly as Pax Prime. I only got badges this year because uh, and this don't. Think that this is going to be a consistent thing because they said they might take it away any time but if you remember at club pa they give you an early chance to buy badges otherwise they sell out within literal minutes of them going live uh, hapax tried to get us a hotel this year and uh they had already sold out within 15 minutes they're all full <laughs> it's ridiculous you might actually be able to um you could do be an enforcer at Pack South. I think that would be a ton of fun. If I lived in uh, Boston or uh, Seattle, I would totally enforce because it's a pretty cool deal. We were talking with um, Andrea's sister Lisa about that yesterday, since they're in Boston. They're like, yeah, we don't really want to do that. We want to have fun at Pack. Like, no, man. They you don't have to work the whole time you're there. They give you a bunch of perks. You get like an hour or two in the uh, expo hall with enforcers only, which sounds amazing. 
actually go do things that would normally have like an hour wait VR stuff. And I think that they let you try to schedule your enforcer stuff around things that you want to attend. So if there's like a panel you really want to go to, you can ask to be the enforcer on that panel and they make an effort to accommodate people for that. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, man, if you guys ever end up in Seattle, we've talked to a couple enforcers about it and we've been waiting in lines for stuff before. It's usually people who live there. I think I'm sure part of it is they just have a ton of uh, volunteers. Ouch. The community is very amenable to that. So they don't have like a shortage of manpower. TwitchCon, though, I'll tell you, you're not missing out on anything unless if it's significantly different this year from last year. I couldn't go this year because it's in San Diego. You said it was kind of disappointing last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was weak. They, maybe they'll improve on it. It was their first iteration too, so no one ever gets anything right on the first try. Oh, my parents did a pretty good job. <laughs> good joke. Oh. Uh, when you're at PAX, you should go check out the Direwolf Digital booth. I bet they're giving away beta keys. That's the oh. uh, those are the people who are doing the Eternal game that I'm. Oh, like, so sweet, much sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you should talk that up on stream. I was trying to repeat what you were saying oh, yeah. earlier. So, you know, a lot of people play card games. Eternal, go. Yeah, Eternal is a new digital card game, very similar to. Well, I kind of think of it as the the beautiful child of Hearthstone and Magic really is kind of the best of both worlds. You've got a smooth, um, like, fast, uh, clever interface like Hearthstone with sort of sophisticated rules and interactions of magic. But it also takes advantage of all the cool things you can do in a digital game. Like, one of the mechanics in the game is called Warcry. And whenever, a, say, a creature with Warcry attacks, it gives plus one, plus one to the top creature in your deck. <laughs> That's cool. Which you couldn't do in Magic because it's paper and you can't track which card that was without it being a exactly. huge pain in the ass. Exactly. And so you can get in a situation where you've like you've attacked with three creatures since last time. So now this this one drop that you were gonna have, you know, there's gonna be like a two one to begin with, now ends up coming out as a five four. There's another cool mechanic called Echo, where it which says when you draw this card also draw a copy of this card. I so see. it's another so way you, of getting some... you'd war cry the top card and then draw it, and then you get yes. two buffed cards. That's cool. Exactly. So cool exactly. interactions like that. That's awesome. And you said that there's some big like magic personalities working on it. Yeah, LSB. yeah. So one of the sort of magic physics biggest faces is LSB, um, and he is one of the. Uh... Oh my God. This guy's uh, kind of nasty. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so LSB is one of the like the, the main designers of the game, mm -hmm. um, and there's a bunch of other ones: Patrick Chapin, Conley Woods, and so on. If, the, if you know Magic players, you would probably recognize it. And one of the cool things is, as you're playing playing the game, playing on the ladder, every now and then you like to come up against one of them, like. Luis Scott Vargas beat me in draft one time. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We're talking about um, Eternal is the name of the game, right? Yeah, Eternal. Uh, currently, you can sign up. It's still in closed beta right now. You can sign up for beta keys. Uh, takes between two weeks to a month or something like that, maybe longer to, for that beta key to arrive. We're guessing it's it's probably going to be speeding up in the near future, maybe even coming to open beta. What's your status? So Dieter is a magic judge and a pretty hardcore magic player since how young were you when you started playing? Uh, I started playing when I was 
nine, maybe. Wow. So like on on two decades. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I started in like ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, so he's he's pretty serious about magic. And I remember when Hearthstone came out. Like Hearthstone's cool, and it does a lot of things that magic doesn't do as far as being accessible. But having something that's bridging the gap. But can you can you take actions on your opponent's turn in any way in Eternal? Yes, there are instants. Um, you know, what you would consider in magic, you, know, you can cast lightning bolt on their turn. Um, but in order to simplify things over how magic is, there's only a couple spots where you can do that. Basically, if your opponent goes to attack or if they cast a spell or at the end of their turn. Um, okay, so there's not this like constant stack where you're passing priority all the time and it makes it really hard to play it digitally because right. when you're playing it in, in person, you can just kind of use subtle body language to indicate that you pass priority in a game like Magic and computers don't do that. <laughs> Right, right. That's nice. That was a really cool boss fight before. How do you feel about Mirrodin? Asked Kami. Is he still salty? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's not so pure anymore. I'll say that. Um, do you mean the original Mirrodin or the Return? I wasn't actually playing during the original block. Suck like about we're just gonna have waves of enemies here, but let's see. There must be some other way out of here, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, new gun. Actually, uh, Kame, yeah, Brian Kibler, I think, is another one of the, the people at least consulting on Eternal. That's really fun. My two biggest issues with Magic are that it's uh, really, really intimidating to get into if you haven't been playing it for a long time. Um, it feels like you have so many mistakes you can make, like the micro of the game from turn to turn. There's so many things you can do wrong, even something as simple as attacking that Hearthstone manages to fix. And I really don't like the mana system. I really don't like drawing for land and having the opportunity that you can get flooded or screwed. Um, so moving just to having like a crystal every turn, like Hearthstone, is is a big deal for me. But I'm a much more casual player, so I'm willing to sacrifice some of the complexity and interactions. Can we destroy that? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's a. Oh, no, but you can turn it off. Oh, oh, that helps. Oh my god! So many dudes. <laughs> Like, you just kind of get it head level and just move left and right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty magical. Alien hamburger. My favorite. So Eternal does have a mana system, kind of like magic, or very similar to magic. Mm -hmm. um, but the, it's also much more forgiving than magic is. Um, yeah, it just needs some, like, protections, I think. Like, mulliganing is one protection, but... Right. So one of the ways that um, Eternal gets around some mana issues is the first hand you draw up is going to be a random seven or eight or however many cards from your deck. Um, if that's a shitty hand, you can mulligan it, um, in which case you, are, you get a second hand that is guaranteed to have between two and five lands in it. Oh, that's nice. That's a good solution, I think. So it can still often be not perfect, you know, maybe you only get one of the colors that you need or something like that, but mm -hmm. um, a lot better than, than, you know, nothing at all. Right. So it's like a puzzle where we have to find the right path to these so we can disable them? Possibly. Yeah, I saw a pretty good video from was it Raynod recently he was talking about Hearthstone and how he ex ex accepts that Hearthstone isn't magic and he's not asking that Hearthstone be made magic, but he likes that um, there's more interesting decisions that you have to make in magic. So like uh, a card that says, um, you know, 
draw the top card from your deck, draw a couple cards from deck, decide whether you want to put them back in any order, like ponder in uh, magic. The Hearthstone equivalent of that just says draw the top three cards, pick one, and discard the others. But you get like three decisions to make with a card like Ponder. You get to say, what order do I put them back in? And then you get to decide whether you want to shuffle. And it's like, he understands that that's a lot of complexity to add into something like Hearthstone, but it makes it feel a lot better. How did you disable it before? Was there just a prompt or something? Uh, there's a like lever below it. Oh. Usually like right below it or just to the side. Oh, oh, oh. Green, like oh, yeah. couldn't possibly miss it. Just a dumbass burger. Thank you. Yeah, there's not enough decisions to make in Hearthstone. Um, it eventually, once you have a good deck, like the interesting part of the game is building decks, which is why I think the the um, adventures are my favorite part. They're really, really cool. Yeah. Like, see what the boss does and be like, oh man, can I build a deck that takes advantage of this boss? Um, but then once you've done all of those, it's pretty much just like make the ideal deck and then play the most expensive card on each turn. You're not saying, ooh, do I want to save this? Do I want to cast this now? Is this the way I want to assign my attackers? Right. And I guess something that... Uh, oops. Something that magic makes you do in that the opponent decides how the monsters block is that you have to think, what would my opponent do? And you never have to ask that question in Hearthstone, ever. Right, right. Um, and Eternal, you all like magic, you get to choose how you want to block. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one of the ways that it um, ends up being less tempo-y than Hearthstone. That's my biggest complaint about Hearthstone, is it just, I feel like there's so many games where my opponent just starts off a little bit faster than I do, and then there's just Starting nothing over. I can do for the rest of the game. Right. It's kind of Hearthstone's equivalent of like getting mana flooded. Mm -hmm. um, if you there's just the right no time to ever answer. catch your breath because they because they control the board when they got the creatures out. Yeah. So can you sell me on Elder Scrolls Legends, Kodiak? Like anytime I hear anything Elder Scrolls related, I kind of roll my eyes, and it's it's an unfair prejudice that I have. Like with the Elder Scrolls and MMO, I'm like, what, what makes this different? Is it is it just Hearthstone, but with, you know, Elder Scrolls characters and settings and things like that? I assume that there's something going on there that's different mechanically that makes it interesting. Though. Uh, well, one of the things that might be able to sell you on it. Uh, is the fact that it's also made by Direwolf Digital, the same people who've made Eternal. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, Interesting. My impression is maybe this is the game that they're, you know, that's the game that they've made to pay the bills, and Eternal right. is their sort of their love, is their, that's their baby. I see. Oh, by the way, I just noticed that there is, in fact, an arrow that tells you exactly where the other person is. Are you and serious? how far they are. Yeah, up in the top right. <laughs> I just noticed it. Oh, oh yeah, that oh, arrow that is right next to your name. That yeah, you that should have noticed forever ago. I didn't <laughs> notice it either. Wow. That's pretty helpful. Yeah, they should totally add a feature like that to this game. <laughs> that makes sense. So they, they get contract work to do this for Bethesda, the Elder Scrolls card game. And they do Eternal separately. Dismissed. Yeah, it sounds cool. I'll see if I can get some beta keys at packs. I don't know how many they're handing out, but usually pretty, pretty givey with those. I don't really care yeah, if you yeah. physically get there. Another cool thing about Eternal that, you know, keep spouting off my my love for it. No, um, please do. What the, just a, a very, well, so far a very close-knit community and a very uh, verbal, friendly, approachable uh, development crew. Like, oh, I am half talking, well, not really, I'm, I'm 
minutes ago I asked them in their Discord chat, hey, you know, is Direwolf Digital going to be at PAX? And, you know, one of the one of the developers said, yes, we are. Cool. And, yeah, they're, they're talking away over here, and they, like, when a patch is coming out, they they show up on Discord, and they start teasing at what some of the, like, different <laughs> balance changes are going to be. Dude, that's really fun. I'm glad to hear that. Like, I think that's a luxury that smaller developers can have. I worry that as they get really big, you get such a toxic community automatically that you, you yeah. can't talk anymore. You see what happens with, like, Pokemon Go, where people are losing their shit at Niantic just because there's so many people playing it. But it sounds like the community itself is pretty chill, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Just and they've like already, got, you've already got streamers and mm -hmm. um, podcasters and so on. No, Direwolf Digital is literally spitting in all of our faces. Yeah, not too much of that. Chopper's recon. Garrett's gone. He made it out. Negative. Shit. Okay. <laughs> was he able to decipher the tablets <laughs> Professor Stein was working on? It seems. Uh, Quinn, I'm gonna have to get back to you in a second. Sam, what's going on? Hey, get that. Whoa. Hell you got a preview of this thing before. Okay, so it's like attached to... I wasn't quite sure whether it was... Okay, I don't think heavier. It would be an extra... Make cover if you haven't already. Yeah, I just did. <laughs> techno -polyp. You got perforated by the techno polyp. I'm trying to look for the heavier thing he was talking about. Why does Sam only have one knee pad? The same reason that Cloud only has one shoulder gauntlet. It's... Asymmetry is cool, man. What? I guess we are supposed to leave and come back. That's surprising. Oh shit. Oops. Uh, I feel like there's some way out of... There's an exit that takes you to more enemies. It might lead us to, which I'm guessing is looking like a rocket launcher or something. Oh, just like straight across the way. Yeah, Maybe? you can check my little arrow. Yeah, yeah, I see that. <laughs> ah, fun to watch a speedrun of this game, I think. Curious if they do anything to like avoid the guns or if they actually try to go through and disable all of them, for example. How old is this game? Uh, four or five years. It came out while I was here in Columbus, but I guess it's not actually saying a ton. <laughs> it was too damn long. Five hundred million years. November 2011, okay. That's quite good though. Digging it. Alright, so there's a new gun that I don't know how to get past. Yep. Uh, come around. You keep trying to find a way around. Yeah. That's the other more different around, okay. Made it on one of them. Oh. How did I get past this thing in the first place? I promised that I did. Oh wait, right, I will... Oh, never mind. We're good. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Can't. Not that way. Not that way. Nope. Now I think we want to dash over here. The arrow conveniently points us. Good level design. There's another one. Okay. I think this is where I died before. It's kind of in the right direction, but not quite. Hello. Thank you. I'm 
another one off. That's effectively just a shortcut though from where we spawn, if I recall correctly. It does have a lot of the more modern game design sensibilities, like not having limited lives. It's something you can opt into if you want them, but... I think the way right. this game is set up, this wouldn't be fun. I mean, yeah, you end up, you know, gauntlet with a with free play corpse rushing everything to win, but it still feels fun because the, the unit of fun in this game isn't so much its difficulty as it is experiencing the next crazy thing that they throw at you. Right. Winning with style when so, you can. Yeah. A uh, single player, you die a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, it's good. I had a whole lot against that giant rocket the brain boss. monster. Yeah. Well, with him, it makes sense that you would die so much in single player because, like, his only his face is uh, resistant to damage. Hey, welcome back, Namaku. Oh, you mean like there's not a lot of uh, recoil? Uh, arrow there. Ah, huh. up here. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, this looks like nothing but good things for us. Oh, it's another scorpion guy. Yep, plus I think the uh, Technopolis is circling around too, so watch out. Oh, your, really? Watch your okay, yeah, if you're looking out and you see him at all. I don't see him, but I can hear him. Oh, yep, there he, he is. is here. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. You got, a, you got a lot of cover. Oh, we were just leaving him behind in that other area. <laughs> We'd come back once we get the item to beat him. Makes sense though, he's a he's a helicopter monster. Stone, do you copy? We were Can it wait? I'm still working on securing that bird. But I thought No time to talk. Yeah, outside of his goofy puns, like the stuff that Sam says in the story is kind of like straightforward, serious, like uh military stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's not really joking around that much when he's talking on the comms. It's only when he's killing stuff. Alright. Got 50 rockets, but no rocket launcher. Hi. Rocket soul. Oh shit. Oh, it's the techno ball. I'd love to give me some rockets. Where'd you find that rocket launcher? Uh, I only found the rockets, not the rocket launcher. Oh. Got it. If you find the rocket launcher, let me know. I'm trying to follow the arrows right now. Arrows have led me into an area that has turrets that I don't know how to deal with just yet. I feel like I might be on the right path since I haven't picked up these power-ups yet. Okay, turned off another thingamajig. More rockets. Oh, here you are. Uh, is this the rockets themselves? Yeah, yeah the I just rockets. found rockets. 
Oh wait, here it is, presumably. Rocket launcher, on me. Ah! Next to the rockets. Which makes sense. Where are you at? Positional audio. No. Rocket launcher accepts no substitutes. Try not to blow up our. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to work out very well. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, what the plan was secure. there. <laughs> okay, disregard. That's but pretty funny. You up to speed on what we've gotten out of the tablets, Professor Stein's <laughs> secure. They seem to indicate that there's a secret chamber inside the Great Pyramid. I want you to head that way. I'll get a chopper out to you. Forget it. There isn't a man alive that can fly a chopper in here and survive. Anyway, <laughs> I can see it from here, and I always preferred the scenic route. What do you mean? There's aliens all over the place. It's. Kind of, kind of an ongoing joke throughout this of, like, start counting all of the helicopter pilots you talk to very briefly, <laughs> and they, like go down in some sort of explosion before you can able, you're able to meet them. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> the bird is secure. <laughs> One. Daddy a pilot? Cause you are really ugly. Alright, that uh advances my stream nudity count in a really exciting way. I played out last, which had the dong mages that were really frustrating. Oh no! Oh my god. And you said there's codex entries for them? Yeah. <laughs> what was your last stream nudity count from? Uh, Outlast is a game where there's these like dong wizards, oh. these naked dudes that just kind of walk slowly at you and kill you in one hit. Yeah, they're like harpies, right? That's, that's yeah, a traditional oh yeah. presentation of harpies. Oh, dong mages. Yeah, dong mage. <laughs> like, dawn mage. Like, the, the coming of the sun. How, how tasteful. <laughs> Guard Scorpion over there. Maybe we could use rocket launchers on those guys, can't we? Forgetting that that's oh, yeah. a thing we have now. Absolutely. Not so great against the harpies, but. Right. Does anyone just ask the aliens to leave? Excuse me. I think at some point you ask them to leave and mental just moons you. Kind of rude like that. Find you here. 
hear harpies oh, there are. behind you. Okay. Freedom is free. There's a hefty fucking fee. That seems like potential death. Okay. Disregard. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Nothing says, honey, I'm home like a stick of dynamite. Honey, I'm home. And I guess we picked up some C4 now ourselves. Oh, yeah, we do. Cool. As a matter of fact, I do. Questing C4 type stuff. Oh, that was our way of progression, I see. Oh, yeah. I thought this is the way we came from. Yep, I'm just grabbing some more. Oh, no, I got some full on ammo. That loot, though. Alright, climb up on the freeway? Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. That can't be right. Yeah, yeah. Give it a run and jump. Oh, I see. Got it. Cool. <laughs> oh, double shotgun. Oh, do we just get a new weapon? Oh, no yep. shit. How does that work? Are you playing mouse and keyboard or... Uh, I'm mouse or... and keyboard right now. Um, if you want to... Swap between them. You just like, you know, hit three for. I guess hit three, it'll take you to shotgun. I, I guess see. double shotgun now, and then if you hit it again, it'll take you to. Is there a reason you use one, want to use one or the other? Um, you know, they've got different. The double barrel shotgun is doesn't have the same sort of uh, shot speed. Mm -hmm. But it hits harder, maybe. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, the comparison to Doom is pretty apt. It's the style of the enemies. Oh, a whole lot of ammo and armor and stuff back here. Okay. Maybe you've already passed through it, actually. Oh, yeah. Over in here. Yeah, through here, if you... Ah, good looking out. Cool. And maybe even more back in this... Oh, there's a whole lot. A little late to that rocket launcher party. <laughs> so where's my rocket launcher? When it was dead. So many enemies. Looks like he just loads after every shot with a double barrel as well instead of having a clip. Yeah. Yeah. Just snap their necks, that's fun. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Although they give you 50 shots in the rocket launcher too, usually a game would give you like, I don't know, 6. Pretty cool giblet animations too for the rocket launcher. Yeah. There we 
go. I really don't like the bone dudes. I feel like they take longer to kill. Yeah, I... Shit. With the, with the clear... My strategy is usually... If I have, if I'm in a position where I can, well, I try to get in the position where I can just melee them. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that doesn't show up immediately, I just sort of try to jump out of their way while I'm shooting whatever the hell is keeping me busy. Right. Right, and right. Melee them. Oh God. There's so many of them right now. I could try sledgehammering them. Sledgehammer also, I think, works reasonably well. Um, I need something because. Uh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> um, rocket launcher can take them out in one shot if you hit them, but make sure they're not too close when you do that. Mm -hmm. Since they just rush you. I guess I could use the R spin attack on the sledgehammer. The sledgehammer is nice because if you use the uh, if you use the regular melee, you end up carrying their head for a second. You have to take a sec to throw it away. Right, right. Smells like crocs. Come get Sam. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, they just keep coming. Not an infinite number of them, are there? Nope, nope. The brain monster's already back, too. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm not screwing around in this game, man. Hooray! I like that they can introduce the old bosses again once you have a weapon that's just like really OP compared to them. Right. Yeah, I suppose that's a good way of looking at it, because I think we fought the uh, the uh, Scorpion and earlier after you get the Assault Rifle, which is pretty good against them. Mm -hmm. Now we have the Rocket Launcher for the Brain Guy. Right. I don't think... Do we have the Shotgun from the Scorpion? He did have the shotgun, yeah. This is an area where I think if you're, for instance, going to use the shotgun, the uh, single barrel probably works better just because, well, so against many the uh, Kamikaze, because there's so many of them. And they go down in one hit with the single barrel? Right. <laughs> I like the use of smoke effects here too, to make it hard to see when another one's coming, so you can't just pick them off from far away since that's not part of the fun. I'm all out of rockets. I am... Oh, I've got a few. Right. You can hear them from pretty far away too, that's pretty wonderful. It's this really, really light yelling sound. It was funny, when we first got the pistol, I was like, oh, the pistol has unlimited ammo, I'm probably gonna spend 
most of the game using that. I was like, you actually get a shit ton of ammo in this game. You get a lot. You might not you ever use the pistol again. They're still still good for range stuff and occasionally taking out the uh, kamikazes yeah. while they're at a distance. The assault rifle's pretty darn good with them too, so... Yeah. Ah, shit. <laughs> A little What's head going snap on, on this. Thing. this year? What's that? I'm going to Magfest this year. Oh, awesome. Um, I've never yeah, actually made it to Magfest. It's really cool. It's really cool. You know, it's. You know, it's your sort of typical packs or something like that, but with the emphasis being on the music side of things. That's usually one of my that favorite is... things about packs every year too, is the concerts. So. Yeah, yeah. And every one of these uh, conventions has its own thing that's biggest on, right? But it's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Penny Arcade is like 30% video games. Mm -hmm. And 10% panels and Penny Arcade dude stuff and... 10% A lot of fighters <laughs> Oh god um, Anyway, it's, yeah, a, music. it's a big mix of things, but it's 100% music when you're at Magfest Well, it's not 100% either Oh yeah? Um, I guess I've never been, so I just like, You know, it's The way that Penny Arcade emphasizes video games um, Magfest emphasizes music um, but there's still lots of board games and arcade stuff and... Oh, cool. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god. Yeah, I'd like to go sometime. Um, that would be one of the benefits. Andrew had to basically pick between New Mexico and Washington, D.C. So oh, yeah. That was one of the small benefits, but don't want to live in such a huge city. It has the same, like, California problem. a lot of dudes. That's a lot of dudes. But it would be really cool to make it out sometime. The concert lineup at PAX this year isn't terribly exciting outside of uh, Bit Brigade. You've seen Bit Brigade before, right? I think so, yeah. The, the dudes with the speedrunner is the front man? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were at the MAGFest last time I was there. They're actually probably at MAGFest every year, would be my guess. I've seen them do Zelda 1 and um, Metroid for the NES so far. I'm hoping they do Mega Man this year. I've heard they do that as well oh, as First cool. Castlevania. Yeah, really good music really cool. Mega Man 2. Actually, yeah, I'd like that quite a bit because I've seen like I, I've seen them do the, the Metroid and people seen people sort of play Metroid in general and so that's kind of lost a little bit of its mm -hmm. excitement for me. But... Um, Actually, I've never like you know played through all of Castlevania, or almost any of Castlevania. So being able to like watch somebody do it extremely well, yeah, right, and uh, experience it would be yeah, it would be really cool. Castlevania games are really solid, especially once they went the route of being Metroidvanias. Which started with Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night's the first one, and then they're pretty much all Metroidvanias from there. That's when they became. That's when you added Vania to Metroid. To Metroid, Vania. exactly. Mm -hmm. the earlier ones are the really like brutally hard side-scrolling action games, which are still quite good, but they're very, very difficult in a way that Metroidvanias typically aren't.
Castlevania's always been a, a fair hard, though. Like, Ninja Gaiden's not fair hard, right? Some bullshit happens in Ninja Gaiden that's completely not your fault. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the case with... Uh, there are so many of these things. I'm gonna keep saying that over and over, but... continues to be true. Usually if I die in Castlevania, it's my fault. A couple exceptions. Yeah. Yeah, usually when I die in Castlevania, it's your fault too. <laughs> That's super important for me from a, being able to tolerate difficulty in a game perspective, though, is to know that every time I fail, that it's my own failing and not the game being glitchy or something like that. Right, right. It's one of those clearly you should have anticipated and. <laughs> Just like when you play, is it, I want to be the guy. Want to be the guy. Well, see, <laughs> I, I want to be the guy. <laughs> is the opposite of that, but it also doesn't feel like uh, you, you don't get mad at it for the same reason, right? Right. If you were gonna get mad, you shouldn't have been playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> right. That game is discovering the bullshit. Holy shit! We gotta fight that thing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Assumably uh, we're supposed to Independence Day it. Attack its yeah, weak I point for magic damage. See the, yeah, attack the weak point. When you have time. Yeah, right, it goes, but closes also... eventually. Oh, so this is happening. Okay. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and there's still tons of harpies everywhere. Yep. And do we get somewhere where we can get infinite rockets? Yes, yes, so all the rocket crates that are, like, almost all the, like, sort of big pedestal areas have a rocket crate. I see. So I think that, I think it's only the, uh, when it's shooting a laser down on the city, that's yeah, the body blow up. Just questioning that, so it is Independence Day style. But it doesn't actually take damage until the thing goes away, I guess. Uh, oh wait, oh, okay. So there's there's two attacks. One is a like a blue laser that's shooting around in multiple directions. The other one is like shooting straight down. Right. The straight down is the one that actually hurts it. Okay. Oh my god! Just walk right into that. One with like the red trails of fire coming out of it. We're looking for, and it plays a little sound effect to let you know that you actually damaged it. It looks like. I hear you. <laughs> oh my god! Put on a gun. Ah. My bad. You can go find another pedestal. This flight's not joking around. <laughs> you can fly an airplane to it, Randy Quaid style. You know what I'm getting at. Chaos Factor. <laughs> Everybody keeps doing quote 259 whenever those things spawn. The... Ah! Oh shit! Thank you. Shit. Oh god, ow, oh god, ow, oh, ow, oh, ow. Oh. Laser hurts, man. Oh, it's shooting monsters out of those things, too. But that's primarily what they're doing, they're like tractor beams. Do we finish it? Made it fly away. All your base or belong to us, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Quinn, you read me? Loud and clear. Just encountered a warship. Scared it off though. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Scared it off. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so casual. The scientists were Not really a big deal. Mumbo 
Jumbo, my favorite. Here's the weird thing. There's no direct way in. The map just shows this isolated bubble. The words on it say, the Sphinx is the key. Well, the Sphinx, got it. I think it means the Sphinx is the key. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Sam, the scientists are almost positive we can figure out a solution. Tell them I already thought of one. Sam, you can't blow it up. It's a priceless artifact. You'll just have to film it. Sam, this is ridiculous. You can't. <laughs> the Texas license plate. For no reason. Like <laughs> they dropped the car yeah. out of here for him. <laughs> So that, I would argue, was kind of the first real serious sam stage that we just played that was pretty that cool fight. yeah just constant enemies and it's not even like okay i just have to kill all the enemies to progress it's like don't you can't kill all the enemies right <laughs> be aware of them stop them from killing like, you yeah exactly pick off a few like deal with the most immediate threats and then go back to the boss fight <laughs> Castlevania Lords of Shadow. I didn't play that one, uh, Namaku. It's uh, it's 3D though, right? Yeah, I ran away from it was like a metal slime. Waste of investment. Sam, have you reached the Sphinx yet? I'm getting there. You solved that riddle yet? Not quite. We've translated one of the lines, but we still don't have a solution. What's it say? It says the true riddle of the Sphinx has many questions, but only one answer. Is that supposed to help? It's the best we have right now. How comforting. Mumbo, perhaps. Jumbo, perhaps not. Say how a robot walks or talks? Sure we can. It's pretty right here in your circuit diagram. No. Oh Ben. Grab the hand. Oh my God. There's. Why is there so much bullshit? I see what you mean about this not being cramped. There's probably invisible walls off in the distance where the sand is, right? But other than that. Why don't you go check it out? <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Holy shit! <laughs> Check it a out. I was out there. Oh my god! <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah, and there's even like little pillars out there where you look at the pillar like, okay, that's an invisible wall, whatever. They put a little marker there. <laughs> you have like room to run away from it, or did it just sort of came out of nowhere and you're eating? Um, I was trying to run, but I, I don't think I could have escaped it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it would be fun if you could actually kill it. By the time you see it, probably, probably far enough out there, you yeah. can't get back. Right. I think I, I think I played around with it, and like it will follow you a little ways back into the, uh, like. Oh, you know maybe that's it. It'll, it won't appear until you're beyond the pillars, ah, but it'll sure. follow you back the whole like sand line. Oh, okay. So once sure, it showed sure. up, there's just no way for you to uh, survive it. That's a really cool way to do an invisible wall, and not have it be an invisible wall. Like I'm sure there's still a boundary somewhere out there, but. You're never gonna reach it. Yeah. Very, yeah. very clever. Yes, yeah, so I like how they've made the the brain boss into like he, I think he has slightly fewer hit points, and that now he dies with one rocket launcher attack. But it feels cool. Yeah, yeah, the smaller one. You can vote for it, Prop Gable. It's on the voting spreadsheet, Game Saucer added it. You get the command for it. Oh, I'm so screwed. Oh, we got another. <laughs> no problem. Something heavier. I'm out of rockets to kill that thing. Got it. Is this 
see more games to play around with, like things that are kind of emergent breaking but necessary, like invisible walls and finding an in-universe solution for it that feels right. Yeah. Uh, been sitting at like eight life for a couple minutes now. Biomex or chicken. Could you just play all the games? We're gonna not. Heck is that? And this, I feel like headphones are a must for this game. Yes. <laughs> You can sometimes see the sand wheel in the distance too, that's nice. It would be a shame to miss out on that if you weren't a dumbass that runs out in the desert and checks it out, right? Right, right. The first time you're like, wait, what, what was that? What did I just <laughs> yeah. see? Huh? Whoa! Oh, that's, kind of huge. that's so cool. Yeah, I, yeah may have, I may have just taunted it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And they have like a a special uh, incentive to make it as huge as possible because they don't expect you to actually have to fight it. That's really cool. That might be one of my favorite things in the game so far. Oh my god. <laughs> Cool, man. Oh. <laughs> Why? That wasn't the best solution there. Oh, keep getting killed by those things. We could have more deaths to those guys than anything else. Kind of nice. As long as you die enough time to the same thing, it's like, okay, we're gonna back you up a little bit here. Sphinx. Oh, that means they're teleporting in. What that sound effect means? And here's this weird, like, vroom, vroom. Yeah. Kind of like a sock wave. Sock yeah, like a shock zip, wave. Zipping sound, kind of. Yeah. There's a huge armory back over here. Tons of stuff. Picked up the key card. Nice. Excellent. So we both got the benefit of that, I suppose. I I guess if you didn't see a purple key card in there, you no. then which works for both of us, yeah. Cool. I thought you can keep seeing the thing in the distance there. Oh my god. 
Oh god. <laughs> you can try to use the kamikazes to take them out. Thank you. Good looking out. Yep, Save yep, my yep, bacon. yep. <laughs> I wonder if they got rid of the heads on most of the enemies just to discourage you from thinking of it like that kind of game. Like, you know what, I should pause for a second, try to line up my headshot. No, no you shouldn't. Oh I think in some of the earlier games, like First Encounter, um, those headless guys are actually running around. Like there are some, some that don't even have guns. They're not kamikaze, but they're running around. They're actually holding their heads and like hitting. <laughs> them. That's pretty good. Ah, key card open this way. Oh man, look at that. Good call. Wow, that feels really satisfying in this game. I love that you're, you're <laughs> they're spinning. You went there. Remember that episode Spin of Simpsons to win. where, where Bart's like, "Well, I'm just gonna stand here, going like this, and if you get hit, it's your fault." Says, I'm just going like this, and if you get hit, it's your fault. Oh god, I'm so. This is my fault. <laughs> Spin to win, man. It's a thing. Kill those bone assholes. Um, I guess the, against those skeleton guys, um, if you can like run away from them, like kind of straight backwards, they'll all kind of line up following you. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. And then like just take them all at once. Yeah, or just you know keep shooting rockets and it'll hit all of them. Two, three health. Ah, thirteen health. Much better. <laughs> Just disregard health. Just throw your corpse at everything. It's much more fun now. No. <laughs> Try to stay alive. I, I hope it keeps track of how many times you died, right? Just for. Uh... I think. I think at the end of each stage, you can sort of see your like score. Yeah. That's check good. of how many of the secrets you found. And... See who's doing better. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how this game escalates from the first level. It's like, okay, I get it. You know, you jump on some crate, find some secrets. Like, wait, no, you don't have time for any of that anymore, even though you can still do it. Yeah. I love how quickly you go from seeing the boss to seeing like 10 of the boss. Oh, sorry, that's you.
<laughs> oh, come on. Ugh. It does not end. Yeah, it's fun when they do that in games. You can do it in a way that's smart. I feel like Dark Souls does it really well. They're usually a little bit weaker. Speaking of random encounters, one of the uh, spin-offs of this game is called Serious Sam the Random Encounter. Really? And it is a... I don't know if you've played, like, Cthulhu Saves the World or any arcade 3 or anything like that, but it's a... Kind of like an 8-bit RPG really? version of this. It's maybe an hour <laughs> long, two hours long. Uh-huh. That sounds amazing. I think the whole game, like every combat you're in, um, you know, it, it kind of looks like Final Fantasy VI, mm -hmm. except uh, your team of three or four characters is running backwards. <laughs> <laughs> the whole playing time. on that idea. That's pretty great. Than just this. Oh god, oh god. We gotta plant C4 around the building. I don't think we actually need to kill any of these guys, except the ones that. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> oh goodness. We gotta place like. Three more C4, I think, on both sides to destroy the Sphinx. Gotta find more C4 first, though. Just place all mine. Yeah, the RPG one Phoenix mentioned earlier. I didn't know that it was like that, though. That's pretty funny. I love that Final Fantasy VI style, too. I wonder what possessed them to do that if they're just fans, you know? Rockets. More C4. Do you have any at the moment? I've got two if I can get the. Uh... Oh god. It's so hard to get over there. Place them. I got one. Where does it need the. Uh... Oh my goodness. There's so many enemies. Uh, it's on either flank. I gotta place one more on one flank. And I think we need three on the other. Ah, yeah, okay. Alright, we just need one more on this side. Coming. God, I need one more. Gonna find some more first. There might be some in that crate down the other end of the map. Ah, oh, I'm so close. Whoa! Well, the enemy just threw me over a gate that's locked. Oh. I don't know if I can get back to you guys. <laughs> oh, it's a okay. secret found, so maybe I'm supposed to be <laughs> oh, no. here. Yeah, yeah. An enemy knocked me over it. It's crazy. Is this the Great Pyramid? Oh, yeah, there's, that's the crate. There's... I like how they're all trying to get in at you. <laughs> Well, I'll just uh, try to tank him while you place the last C4. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Quinn. I've reached the Sphinx. Tell me you have this thing solved. Not just yet. Is there not like a lever to get out of there? Close, don't do me much no, good. it just says the door is locked. Sounds like it's time for oh. a plan B. Sam, for God's sake, it's one of the Earth's oldest. I could probably kill myself. Okay, so rocking myself to death and see if it really spawns careful. me out of here. Do you want to undo all the work we've done? Hey, feel free to keep for <laughs> I'll see if I can tune in from Pax, uh, Kodiak. That'd be fun. I was liking watching you play Pillars of Eternity. Priceless. 90s references. Ha <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they said we need like two more minutes to solve the puzzle. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> oh, good, it ported me back here. Hold, please. <laughs> you saying I needed. We. <laughs> the yelling sound when you fall in there is pretty cool too. We're about at time, so if we get to a natural stopping point, let me know. Because that is probably it right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> or here, yeah. Some shitty switch in here. What's in here? Some jumping puzzles. They go up, actually. Oh. Do they go all the way up? We'll see. Hopefully not. Hopefully that one comes back down and we jump over to it, maybe. Huh. Maybe not. All right. We could probably stop it there. Let me um. Sure. Can we save? Like, how do we pick up from this point next time? We just get to select the chapter in the multiplayer menu or something. Yeah, I think in the single player, you'd probably be able to like say where you are. But yeah, it's most like the chapter. I, it probably takes us back to might be like sub points in the chapter. Oh, okay, sure, sure. We can we'll figure that out for the next time we play it. We can do a quick pre-test yeah. just to make sure we're starting the same point. Lots of fun, man. I'll come back in um, Discord here in a sec uh, after I do my my cool. spiel. Back in a sec.